On the CPIB investigation involving Minister Iswaran, briefly, the facts of the case are these. While investigating a separate matter, CPIB came across some information concerning Minister Iswaran that merited investigation. CPIB alerted me on the 29th of May and pursued this lead further on their own volition. On the 5th of July, Director CPIB briefed me on the findings he had at that point. He told me that CPIB would need to interview Minister Iswaran to take the investigation further, and he sought my concurrence to open a formal investigation. I gave my concurrence the next day, the 6th of July. On the 11th of July, Minister Iswaran was brought in by CPIB and subsequently released on bail. I instructed him to take leave of absence until the investigations were completed. Subsequently, I interdicted Minister Iswaran from duty with a reduced pay of $8,500 per month until further notice. Such incidents involving ministers are rare and there's no rule or precedent on how to effect an interdiction on a political office holder. Hence, I use the current civil service practice as a reference point. The specific details in Minister Iswaran's case follow generally how the civil service would deal with a senior officer in a similar situation. But this was my decision as Prime Minister because the political context for a minister and a civil servant being investigated and interdicted are different. I should point out that CPIB investigations are still ongoing. I am unable to provide more details on the case so as not to prejudice the investigations in any way. I ask members of this House and the public to refrain from speculation and conjecture. We must allow CPIB to do its work to investigate the matter fully, thoroughly and independently. When the investigation is completed, CPIB will submit its findings to the Attorney General's Chambers, which will decide what to do with them. Whichever way the facts come out, the case will be taken to its logical conclusion. That has always been our way.